In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a dispersion effect using Adobe Photoshop. Now this dispersion effect looks really cool where you take a portrait of somebody and basically make it look like they are breaking apart into lots of little pieces. If you get on Google Images and do a bit of a search for the dispersion effect Photoshop, um, you'll see what I mean by that. So can't really get any huge images here at the moment. We'll see if this one wants to get a bit bigger for us. There's an example of the dispersion effect in practice there. So you see we would have had orig originally had a um, picture of a, a bloke there. Looks like he's screaming. And then by applying this dispersion effect in Photoshop, it makes it look like he's shattering into lots of little pieces. So it's a really cool effect. Going to have a bit of fun with this one. Um, let's get started now by heading over to Photoshop and loading in the model image that I have supplied for you. If you're watching on YouTube, just check the link in the video description for this image. Okay, now once it's in, make sure you have got your Layers panel open, which is on the right-hand side over here. Just unlock it by pressing that little padlock and double-clicking on Layer 0 to rename it. And we're just going to call her Model for a moment. Now, I'm going to go up to the Select menu and select Subject. And Photoshop will use its AI magic to select the model. Okay, now it doesn't quite get it perfect. If you zoom in, say, near her shoulder here, you're going to need to just reselect her shoulder there, which Photoshop missed. So go to your fourth tool down in your toolbox there and grab the quick selection tool and just quickly run over that shoulder there. Um, you can go around the rest of her body looking for any other anomalies there but I think they've done a pretty good job maybe just near the knee and the leg here there's probably a bit too much selected um, so hold alt on your keyboard and then start brushing using that deselect tool just to get rid of some of it oops I went a bit far there so I'll just go back and select the leg again that looks pretty good now okay so once you have a good selection of your model I want you to pop over to your layers panel here and just press ctrl j on your keyboard that will duplicate that layer and make a copy of it, but it doesn't um, have the background with it. So if I just hide that original layer for a sec, you can see it's duplicated the layer, um, but it's got rid of that background, which is what we were looking for. And that means we can delete this model layer now. We don't need it anymore. We just want this new layer. And we can rename that to model just to take place of the previous layer. Okay, we're going to start the dispersion effect now by making sure our model layer is selected and heading up to the filter menu and looking for the liquify filter. Now, the liquify filter is a pretty cool one. That's what a lot of um, photo retouchers use to actually enhance the look of models in their publications to make them look a bit skinnier or have certain body parts a bit bigger or smaller. Um, I guess it's a bit of a contentious tool, but um, we'll have a bit of fun with it in this tutorial. Make sure you've got the first forward warp tool option selected. Um, you can play around with the size of your brush over here. I find slightly bigger brushes up around the 100 pixel mark is a good option. Your density and pressure should be right up at 100%. Uh, and then all you need to do is just start hovering around the right side of her body, so towards the back, and just start clicking and dragging. And you're going to start clicking and dragging out her body. Now be careful, we only want the right hand edge of her body, so the back part of her. Try not to mess with anything on the left hand side there. We don't want to mess with a hand, don't want to mess with a face. We want all the body parts to remain intact apart from this right hand side. Now once you've started pulling it out, go back over it. Okay, We want this to stretch all the way to the edge of the page. So you're going to have to keep doing this uh, for a little while before you are able to stretch it out. Now you can make your brush size a bit bigger again if you'd like to give it a bit of a bigger one there. Uh, probably a bit too big there. It looks a bit funny, but go through and just keep pulling that out until most of those bits stretch out over the edge of the page. I might even pull that up towards the top there. You can have a few little gaps here and there. That doesn't matter. Now we might come back and do this front leg. I'm not sure yet. I might just leave it as is for the time being, but I think it might look all right if we just give that a bit of a dispersion effect too, but I guess we'll see later on. Click OK once you've got yours looking as pretty similar to mine and most of that right side of her body is stretched out to the right hand side of the page. Remembering face should still be intact and most of the body, especially the hand and this front leg should still be intact. Click OK. Alright, so we stretched her right out here. The next thing we're going to do is create a layer mask. We're going to do it slightly different to usual. We're going to hold the Alt key on our keyboard and then press the Create Layer Mask button down the bottom here. 
And what that will do will make a black layer mask, which means it completely hides um, the image underneath it. But we'll bring it back in just a moment with a bit of painting. Okay, so what we're going to do now is grab our brush tool from our toolbox. Looks like a paintbrush. And head up the top to where we've got all our different brushes. Now, usually I think we have the soft round brush in general brushes there selected. We're going to get rid of that today and go right to the bottom of these folders and choose the special effect brushes. Now, you've got a couple here that are some nice splattery brushes. Okay, we're going to start with the first one, Spatter Bot Tilt. Uh, you can play around with the Supreme Splatter and the Pressure Control Splatter if you want, um, but probably just the first two will be all we need today. Remember, you can play with the size up here too. I like changing the size of my brush using the square brackets next to the letter P on your keyboard. So the left square bracket makes it smaller, and the right one makes it bigger. All right, so what we're going to do now um, is we are going to start painting onto the page. Just make sure down the bottom here that you've got the white box on top, which is going to reveal that um, model that we just hit a moment ago. And we should be good to go. So yes, I've got size 100, got me brush. Let's go for it. So start her in the middle of the page and just click and drag down. You'll start to see this splattery kind of effect appearing on the page. Now towards the left side of the model, we can just hold it down and keep moving up and down. And that's going to reveal the left side of her body, which is good. But don't go to the right side too much just yet. We're going to do something a little bit different for that. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I might even go a bit smaller, around 70 mark, and just get a bit more of a face in. And reveal a bit more of the middle part there. There's the hand. I'm looking for the hand. We want to reveal that as well. Okay, now this is looking pretty good. So that's not a bad start. Might just sit tight there like that for now. And I'm going to make my brush a bit bigger. So I'm going to go up to, oh, let's say about 300, and just click now. Not click and drag, but just click a few times. Over the other side, I'll go bigger again and move more to the right. I want these bigger splatters more to the right side of the page. Okay, little splatters close to the body, big splatters further away. And then I'm going to go a bit smaller again, maybe around the 200s, and just start clicking now in closer to our model. And it's just a matter of doing that over and over again, different size brushes for different effects. And we're going to get that kind of splatter effect. Now that's getting a bit hard to see because of our transparent background. So let's hold up there for a minute and bring in a background to make it look a little bit better. Now I've given you access to a backdrop. Um, again, if you're on YouTube, you know what to do. You click the link in the video description, but I'm going to drop that into my Photoshop document and just hold Alt to stretch it out so it fills the entire page. Press the tick and drag that backdrop below our model layer. Okay, so now we can start to see things a little bit clearer. And this is looking all right. Um, what I might do is make that background a bit darker, actually. I still think it's a little bit light. So to do that, a few ways we could do it. I might just add in a new layer. And I'm going to make it black. So I'm just going to quickly head over to these two colors and make black on top. Go to Edit, Fill, and OK. Now nothing really happens there because the black um, layer is right on the bottom. So I'm just going to write black backdrop as that layer name. But what I'm going to do is change this blue backdrop. I should probably call it blue backdrop. I'm going to just change the opacity, which is how transparent it is. And if I lower that number, it's going to start to reveal the black um, behind it. So the black backdrop behind it. So if I drop that down around, well, let's say about 50% for now, that really darkens it off and we can see this effect shining through quite nicely. Now if you want to go back and um, edit your dispersion effect there, you'll need to click back on that little layer mask we made before. So that little black and white layer mask. Grab your brush tool again. Uh, make sure the white color is on top out of those two little squares. And again, you can start clicking around just to add a few more little bits and pieces to this dispersion effect. I'm going to put lots of little ones in close to the body there. I don't think we actually need to just uh, liquefy that front leg. I think it's okay how it is. So I'm just going to leave it as is. And that might do me there for my um, dispersion effect for now. Now, if you're not happy with the liquefy filter, it's very um, straight, I guess you'd say. Lots of clear lines running straight through there. I want to make it look a bit more scattered. I guess you could 
still click on this model layer and go back to filter and liquefy and the effect will still be there and you might be able to just jumble it up a bit so you might be able to make your brush nice and big and pull that down there that can come up there and just mess it around a bit okay and click OK and it might look a little bit more messy now and I don't mind that look um, it's up to you if you want that kind of messier look uh, but that's just what I think looks alright now the last thing I want to do here is probably just darken my model a bit. She's a little bit bright for this image. It's, I know she's a bit too happy for it too. It's got a kind of edgy and grungy kind of effect, so I probably should have chose a better model, but we'll make her a bit darker um, just so she suits the scene. So on the model layer, come down the bottom here where you can add in an adjustment layer. And maybe we start with our... Start with the levels. Okay, now we need to right click on this adjustment layer that's appeared and make a clipping mask. So it only affects the model layer, not the other um, backdrops in our scene. Okay, and now just play around with these three levers. If we pull this end lever up to the left, it's going to make a brighter, which is what we don't want. So it's a matter of moving these other two levers to the right a little bit to make her a bit darker. Um, yeah, there we go. That doesn't look too bad now if you want there probably are a few other um, adjustments you could make the hue and saturation wouldn't be a bad one so saturation is how vibrant the colors are and the hue you can change the tone of the image so again right click on the hue and saturation adjustment layer and make a clipping mask so it only affects our model i'm going to turn the saturation down a little bit so she's not as vibrant in color might even turn the lightness down a little bit as well, not too much. If you want, play around with the hue, see if any of those other hues look good. I don't think we really need to touch that though. It's mainly the saturation and the lightness. All right, now I'm sure there are some other adjustments you could make if you wanted to. You could turn it black and white. You could play around with the brightness and contrast and so on. But I think I might leave it as is um, for now. All right, so that is looking pretty good. Maybe a final crop wouldn't hurt, just to crop off some of that side there. So I'm going to grab the crop tool, which is the fifth tool in my toolbox. Just drag the edges down. That just crops the image a little bit. All right, so there you have it. That's the dispersion effect. Fairly simple one. Um, just is a bit tricky finding a good picture of a model and a good backdrop to make this dispersion effect work well. But if you can find both of those, uh, then you'll be on to a winner. All right, hopefully yours turned out well. When you're finished, go to File and Export and make sure you export it probably as a JPG, a JPEG image. And leave that quality nice and high and just press Export. Alrighty, I will see you guys in the next video.